it's Pride Month in America. That means that every single government institution, major corporation, most of the minor corporations as well, and now even the military are celebrating that chiefest of sins, pride. As Christians, I think it's time we decided to fight back, not with force of arms, but with the knowledge of God's word and way. That's how we win. I'm Jonathan Yellen, and this is Finding the Point. Welcome to Finding the Point. I'm Jonathan Yellen, board certified behavior analyst. Today, we're going to take a look at pride and specifically how we can defeat pride. And we're going to do that using our understanding of natural philosophy or general revelation and combine that with our understanding of divine revelation from God's word. And to help us with that today, we have our very favorite, Pastor Aaron Much. How are you doing, Pastor Aaron? I'm doing great. Glad to be here doing the show again. Oh yeah, you know it's been a little bit here. We've had a few a few uh, uh, intermission episodes here for us, uh, but hey, part of that is uh, rebuilding the set, expanding the things. You might notice some of the new features. Yeah, uh, we're a little bit different here. A little bit different, um, and so yeah. so that's been wonderful. We're very blessed to have uh, had God provide for us so that we can help improve this show, and we appreciate you guys and your support and helping this show keep going. And of course, our sponsors, uh, Calvary Baptist Church in here in South Dakota. Uh, so Pastor Aaron, uh, as you probably caught from the intro, it's Pride Month. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, normally June is my favorite month because my birthday is in June. And also it's the summer, so there's no school. And also the weather's usually nice here in Michigan. So I normally like June, but this June has been a little frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and it's been kind of been coming that way. And, and but really this year seems like, you know, and of course it's pride and it's having to do with the different uh, lifestyles and, and things. But we, really pride, it, it just it bothers us, you and me as Christians who value God and God's way that pride is being lifted up is everybody should be proud and pride about your life and about mm -hmm. you know what you're doing and and the way that you're living your life and proud of this and proud of that yeah whereas a christian's perspective should be not proud but thankful thankful yeah to and God. and and also showing humility right i i think it's right. i think it's so interesting that you know the whole pride month thing it's it's about um your identity, right? And and of course, the LGBT pride focus has expanded now to include more than just your sexual orientation. Uh, but but they're they're expanding because the real core of it all is being proud of this identity that you've created for yourself. Yeah. Wh yep. Which is really really kind of interesting because uh, as we've been putting out. Um, this month on the on the for the show has been putting it on our Facebook page. Uh, how much Proverbs especially hates pride, right? Because uh, oh, if you yeah. haven't if you haven't followed us, go check out the Facebook page. Like that, we put out a different graphic every day for this month that's uh, showing what the Bible says and and what some of our scholars have said about pride. Uh, it's pretty bad. <laughs> Just the <a, a> summary. <laughs> yeah, pride's pretty bad. Uh, but for some reason. Our, our modern society has said, and we'll explore that reason in a moment, but our modern society has said, you should create an identity for yourself, embrace that identity, and then engage in an intense and strong amount of pride about yourself as part of that identity. And, and that's sort of the world's way. That's what the world is saying. This is the way we should go. Um, and so today... And Pastor Aaron, you're going to help us here in a minute with the Philippians chapter 2. So if you're following along at home, open your Bible, Philippians chapter 2. But uh, we're going to look at God's way, which basically says that, that, that approach, you know, establish an identity for yourself and take a strong, proud stance of who you are in that identity. That's not a good way. And it's destructive yeah. and it's harmful to you. It's harmful to society. Um it's just really bad. And and Pastor, and you put up that C.S. Lewis quote um, on the page. That that really, I think, reflects well along those lines. Uh, what was that one that we did again? 
Uh, it, it is pride which has been the chief cause of misery in every nation and every family since the world began. Yeah. Wow. And that that might know, make it significant, it, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, right? And, you know, I'm just thinking as you're talking about this identity and 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 having a pri- being proud of that identity of who I am, mm-hmm. and I, I just think of um, to quote John the Baptist, he must increase and I must decrease. Yeah, absolutely, and, and that should be the Christian view. And I'm a, it concerns me that not just the world and unbelievers have have latched onto this pride, but it's yeah, really well, really penetrating well, think the ab- church. Think about it. Uh, think about it, Pastor Aaron. We have. Um, we have an identity, one that we're supposed to have, right? An identity in Christ, right? We're, we are the people who have said, I'm choosing God over myself. I'm going to accept Christ's gift of salvation. Uh, and that, that changes who I am. That makes me, I'm born again. I'm a new creature. That's my new identity, right? I, and that's a real thing for us. But what the Bible doesn't say to do is take that and be proud of that and and put yourself in that high place. Uh, we know the love chapter in Corinthians chapter 13 talks about, um, you know, love is not uh, puffed up, right? It's not, uh, it, well, it's right. basically not proud. So we know that God's loving way is certainly not to follow after pride, even though we do have an identity as Christians. So um, I, I think... And, and Pastor, and I guess this is more your part of the show, but there's just this wonderfully clear example from Christ in Philippians chapter 2 that expresses how we should consider pride and how we should instead follow God's way of humility and and taking your identity but it, but but not being wrapped up in who you are as a group, but taking yourself as a person and expressing and practicing humility as an individual that's god's way not being part of a group and being proud of the group that you're in but looking at yourself as an individual with an individual relationship to god and then expressing humility from that that that's that's the the way god shows just to preempt all the stuff we're about to talk about so uh pastor and do you want to take us to philippians chapter two here yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and go to Philippians uh, <clears throat> chapter 2. So Philippians 2, 3 through 11, and it's this is a, this passage uh, is one that's, I don't know, it's, it's been special to me in my life. I remember in college really being taught um, about this passage here, and <clears throat> the verse we'll get to in a moment, but where it says that we should esteem others better than ourselves. Uh, really, really stuck with me and influenced me in my life. So um, I guess why don't I just uh, read? Yeah, the go ahead and read it, and then we can go verse. Yeah, by let's verse. read it. Let's read it, and then we'll break it down. <clears throat> okay. So uh, Philippians chapter two, verse three through eleven. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in a fashion, in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross." Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Yeah, that's right. That's good stuff. Well, well, Pastor, and obviously what we see here is the example of Christ, right? Like, Jesus, who literally is God made flesh, come to earth so that he could defeat Satan with this brilliant plan uh, of becoming human so that he could take the sin of mankind on himself and pay for that with his 
undeserved death. I mean, it's just brilliant. Man, man made perfect through Christ. I mean, it, it's fantastic. He comes down doing that. He could have come down being the, I am the savior of mankind and have rightfully earned every praise and accolade that could be given to him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and still completed this plan to die for our benefit. But instead he showed us a better way. He showed us the way of humility. And so Jesus came down, not as the great glorious victor that he was, but he came down being that, but made himself in the form of a servant. He made it, he, he expressed humility, even knowing that he is God, he expressed humility in his behavior and in his thoughts and in his actions. And so that is, that is that perfect model we have from Christ there for this humility. Yeah. And if, if you look at the, the teachings of Christ as well, uh, one of the one of the big things that he did was he he really railed against the the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious leaders of the day, and what what was his issue with them? Uh, much of what they were doing was based in pride of right. what they accomplished and what they did according to the law, or at least what they put up as the yeah, law. Yeah, absolutely. And, well, uh, and that <clears throat> that famous story of the of the Pharisee, right? The the two men go into the temple and the one is, you know, praying loudly so everyone can hear and all the wonderful things that he's done and then the other one in the corner is praying very very quietly and reservedly and and not for you know, his own benefit, but because he's truly seeking to communicate. And and God says, "Well, you, you know, that that Pharisee looking for the accolades, well, he has his reward. His reward is yeah. the accolade, and, he, which is and worthless. It just, like, it, it, I mean, it just floors me that, that like, in that story, and, and uh, the, the Pharisee is literally, well, at least I'm not as, I'm not as bad as that publican, that tax collector over there. Right. And and look at how great I am. And 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 sometimes I think we have a disconnect. We look at those stories in the Bible. Yeah, yeah, that was bad. Good thing I don't do that. Yeah, and then and then of course, <laughs> like yeah, you're not in a Jewish synagogue in the Roman Empire, but uh, I, I, you might be in something pretty close. I don't know how many times in church are we look at. Oh man, I can't believe that they wore that to church. I can't believe they said that. I can't. You know, well at least I'm doing better than that. I'm a better Christian than that. Yeah. And it's pride. It's all pride. Pride is, you know, we think as Christians and in the church, people talk about, well, people in church are hypocrites. Well, the, quite frankly, in the church, we're not all perfect. And we're there because we're not. <laughs> yeah. And, but unfortunately, pride is, is too prevalent in the life of Christians. That's the right. point I'm making. And we need yes. to make sure not to normalize pride. Pride is bad. It's wicked. It's evil. And it's not good for us. I, you know, Aaron, th this kind of just came to me. I know it's not in the show notes, but but think about this. It's easy for us as Christians to be proud because we're right. Like we actually are objectively correct in following God's way from his word. We, we have divine revelation that's shown us we are actually correct, right. right? And because we're actually correct, it's very easy for us to be like, well, I'm right, so... You know, who cares? You guys are morons and you're obviously being stupid and suffering and it's your fault and you could, don't have to do that and we've told you not to. So yeah, it's easy for us to be uh, esteeming ourselves very highly. But look at Christ who came in literally being perfection so that he could be perfection for us. And he doesn't come in being like, I am actually better than you guys because I am actually better than you guys. No, instead he comes in, I'm actually better than you guys, but that's not the position I'm going to take because instead it's better to show humility and to esteem yeah. others better. So so let's let's go to the expository here. I want to break it down because you know that that is what we do. We bring together the theological and and put it through a systematic thinking framework that comes from Christian psychology. So let's bring it together and make it happen. So 
Uh, verse 3 is the one I really want to focus on today, Pastor Aaron. So verse 3, once again, and maybe we can pop it up there on the screen for you guys. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. So uh, we, we have the things we shouldn't do, don't do things through strife or vainglory, and, and that would be worth breaking down in a whole separate episode probably. But for now, let's look at... Ba basically, vainglory would be pride. It would be yeah. seeking my own glory. Yes. And, and, and isn't that most arguments and fights <clears throat> and disagreements about, amongst people is, I'm right, you're wrong, and seeking my own glory. That's, yeah, that's and, where it all comes from. And really, most debate isn't isn't uh from this neutral position of arguing the ideas it really is i'm right because it's me and i am the one so what i said is yep. right I, I i mean and you usually when people get angry about things you know disagreements it's because you said something in a way or you snapped at me or you you did something that made it seem like I'm not as important as I think I am. Yeah, absolutely. You know, <laughs> and that's the vain glory. <laughs> you know, Pastor Aaron, my my wife would comment on this earlier on in our marriage because she was not exposed. She, you know, I, I've mentioned before they have this very calm, very stoic German family. They're wonderful people and so kind. Uh, my family is not that, <laughs> and, <laughs> and so you know we we would just argue for the fun of it, and sometimes. Uh, I, so my wife would see times she's like, Jonathan, you are arguing a position that you don't even believe, just just to win the argument, and of course I'd win the argument because you know I'm the best, right? Or at least I'd have to. So that means I can't give up. I'm going to stick in there and fight and argue and push and pry and find the <laughs> angles and and, and debate just to prove that I'm right even though I don't even believe what I'm saying because it comes back to that vainglory and that pride and the strife so we can yeah. use strife and we can embrace our pride and we can get it for us and it that's not the right way it's not the better way god shows us the better way oh. so that better way is in loneliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves so i want to break those components yeah. down and look at yep. those um, each each is pieces so we can put those together and really fully understand sure. uh, what this is. For those of you in Bible college, this is called expository uh, analysis. So please do that. Um, all right, so lowliness of mind. So uh, when you look at lowliness of mind, this phrase is referring to how we think. So right. this is the internal behavior, if we're going to use our systematic framework from the show. Uh, this is our internal behavior, the the choices we make internally that others can't see. This is your thoughts and feelings inside. Uh, so if we're looking at pride through lowliness of mind and how we think, that means it's not enough to just look humble on the outside or have a reputation for being humble. We actually have to have correct thinking. So it, it's possible, and we've probably done this and seen people like this, where where people will just be like, oh, you know, I'm I, a little old me. I'm just the dumb country preacher, but you know, I I'll just do whatever the Lord says. And and you can tell it's not actually real. They're saying that no. to appear humble, when in reality they're like, yeah, I know what's going on. Look at me, I'm so humble. This guy's got it. Yeah, yeah. Here here's my perspective. My perspective on that is this that. Um, you know, I can, I can be telling you how great I am, or I can be telling you how I'm not really that great in, in beating myself up. You're talking about yourself a lot, but there. I'm still focused about me. <laughs> right. And it's, if you look at the verse, it says in lowliness of mind, esteem others better. The esteeming is actually the focus of what we need to be doing. We are doing so in a lowliness of mind. That's the description, the describer of it. Yeah. It's the esteeming of others. So in other words, focus on others. Focus on other right. people and not me. Yeah. And it's not about beating myself up. It's it's more about I'm putting the needs in, of others before myself. Yeah, that's a brilliant take on it. It, it really is. Um, the, the easiest way out of pride is to stop focusing on yourself, I think. Just practically speaking. Because we can say all day, you know, don't get rid of pride. Get rid you know, don't do that. Uh, you know, take, take this path of humility but uh, practically doing that is really hard and probably impossible if you are focusing on yourself so that yeah. that's a brilliant brilliant analysis there 
and I, I guess um, <laughs> you you know more about this than I do, and I, um, but I remember from my college psychology a term that has stuck with me is egocentric, mm-hmm. right? Which basically means that from my perspective, the whole world revolves around me and young people, teenagers especially, this is something that they struggle with, is everything in the world revolves around them. If it doesn't relate to them in some way, they really don't care about it. And, and, and it's not just something that we grow out of, it's something that we really need to be, be careful about making sure that we are not that way because it's easy for us to be egocentric. The world revolves around Aaron Mudge. Well, the world does revolve around Aaron Mudge, actually, but, um, uh, but Pastor and don't do that. You're stroking my pride. <laughs> uh, but but realistically, though, I mean, um, we teach this skill. Like, I I have clients of mine that I I uh, have in the past worked with this skill on. Uh, we call it perspective taking when we work in in an autism context. Uh, but but okay. realistically. Uh, if you're only seeing things from your own perspective, that's that's limiting. And it is a skill to be able to perceive how others are, uh, how other people perceive the world around them and how their thoughts and feelings about the situation um, are manifesting. And so if we develop that skill in ourselves to see others' perspectives, uh, that gets us away from the egocentrism you're talking about. It gets us away from that self-focus. Right. We can focus on others and consider um, the perspective of those other people. So developing skills and perspective taking is a great way to help overcome pride. Um, and and if you think about it, even if you are as awesome as Jesus was, I mean, he was super awesome, but only it, it, a lot of his work was about helping others and doing things for other people. So I, I really yeah. see we have him for that model there. And, and Jesus never, never exalted himself. He could have. He had the right to. He was God. But he never exalted himself. He always exalted the Father. He always exalted God. I mean, he's part of God. You know, the, the, the Trinity there. But, yeah, that's another episode. But the, the focus, yeah, that's a whole other Send us questions if but you have the questions focus, about the Trinity. <laughs> the focus wasn't on himself. and And that's... To me, as Christians, our job is to be pointing others to Christ. And we, we, we yeah, I need to witness and, and go door knocking, and, and, and that's good. But my point is, my whole life, the way that I live, should be pointing others to Christ. Mm. Whereas if I'm, for, I'm very proud and egocentric in my life, I'm not pointing others to Christ. I'm pointing others to me. And yeah. this comes out in the way that I talk, the things that I talk about. If I'm the kind of person, if you've ever had that a conversation with someone where you leave going, man, everything they talk about revolves around them. That's pride. And, and whereas it should be everything about me points others to Christ. Yeah, absolutely. So, so with that, uh, the idea of lowliness of mind is the internal behavior component. So right. So we have to have correct thinking about ourselves and we have to reorient our thinking from ourselves and our own perspective to this perspective of others and developing yeah. those skills and perspective taking that allow us to manifest this humility as an alternative to pride. I, I have one more thing about the, the internal thinking before I move yes. on if I could. Go ahead focusing on others but i think the other thing too is especially as christians that do, that we believe in an all powerful omniscient omnipresent like all powerful uh infinite god creator if we focus on him and how big he is and we look in the scriptures and we read and we study god and we see how big god is it really shows us in our thinking how small we are. And I know in my life, one of the best ways to, to correct my thinking about myself is not to beat myself up. It's to put others before myself, but it's also to put myself in perspective of an all-powerful creator, infinite God. Yeah, because you can feel like the big 
the big fish in your small pond yeah. but then go to the yeah, ocean I, and you uh, know, you're gonna have to be afraid of some sharks right it's just like you can be the best football player in the whole the whole county and and then you 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 go to college football and you're you're competing in a nationwide and all of a sudden you're the low guy on the total right pole right because you realize how much better the others are than you and it just it puts it in perspective to see how my, my petty little things that I'm so proud about in my life and my identity is nothing when compared to God. I, the Bible says that every man in his best state is altogether vanity. Well, in talking about comparisons, that does lead us to the next part of the verse. So let each esteem yes. others. So the idea of esteem and each esteeming others is to make a comparison of each other. So um, yep. I, I'm not like the Greek scholar or anything, but as best I can tell from analyzing the commentaries and the, the study the study of this specific passage, um, the idea here it could be consider it, it, it could be considered in a way as a, a commander of soldiers would consider his troops. So uh, wh you know sometimes in war you've got to decide which troops am I going to send out on the dangerous scouting mission. Who am I going to stay back here to keep on guard? How am I going to consider as the the captain or sergeant or whatever officer you are, where I'm going to place and use the troops that I have and, and compare and value who to send and who to do what. So the the concept of esteem um, seems related in, in the language, at least towards the same sort of consideration that a commander of, of soldiers would esteem the troops says which troops would you use and when and where so um, it, it it's as a leader in official authority would consider other people so um, it's it is a comparison of people but it shouldn't be a comparison necessarily of which person has the best innate value right because that right. that's an error in thinking because we have no true value beyond that value which we get from from God because we right. will die and be nothing and uh, you know the nihilists will go on all day about that uh, right and, but but because everything turns to dust and all is vanity Ecclesiastes uh, goes on about that uh, we can only have value through God and so correctly analyzing that is is the goal of of esteeming others here yeah and when we understand the fact that my value is not in my uh, talents my abilities my skills how much money I make my value it lies only in the fact that God values me right so when I get a hold of that if this person can do that better than me or I can do this better than another, it doesn't matter what matters is I'm valuable because God values me and then we can analyze, and I, I think this is where you were going, and and look at other people, and they can do this, and they can do that, and they have, you know, as a, a you know, in, in the setting of a church, well, this person's very skilled at, at, at this kind of thing, this one's really good at organizing, and, and, that, and, and so as a pastor, that's part of my job, is to plug people into different, um, different ministries and things where I can see that they have talents and gifts and so that they can use those those gifts but it's not a valuation of who is better yeah and and uh, does that make sense yes and and I would like to add with this it kind of bleeds into the better than themselves portion of this verse as well um, but each esteeming other you're, you're the, the the objective reality of the world is that some people, have advantages uh, in skills and and even okay let's use the world's word for it privileges that other people don't have that's just reality it's not fair okay but it is real it is true and objectively right that some people have advantages that other people don't and and when the Bible's talking here about this esteem and this comparison it it's pointing out I think in a way that even though some people have those better advantages that doesn't make them a more valuable person okay 
Um, and I, I guess we can go right into the better than themselves portion. Um, the the esteem of someone better than themselves, if you're going to esteem someone better than themselves, um, it, it's not necessarily that your value is superior because we have the same value, right? I, the only real value we have is the eternal value we have that comes from God loving us and caring for us and, and saving us. Um, and so when we're esteeming others better than ourselves, we're not looking at their skill or capacity, right? Like, no. like our, our friend Jason, who was on here before, he has amazing skill and capacity in voice reading and his, his YouTube channel is just blowing up. I, th I think there are over 12,000 subscriptions now. He's, he's going gangbusters. He also, by the way, Pastor, and shut it all down this week to go to camp with his youth group. So how awesome is that? What a guy, right? Um, <laughs> right. Hopefully we'll have him on the show again soon to talk about some Christian entertainment. But, uh, you know, he's got that skill that, you know, let's be honest, he's way better at the, the voice acting stuff than we are. And and I'm working on it, guys, but but I'm not I'm not at a Jason Wright level, even though his skill or capacity is better than the skiller capacity that I might have or that you might have. Um, he is going to act rightly and with hum humility and placing himself in a, a valuation as a commander would consider troops, making himself that more expendable soldier. He's the one who's ready to go out and do the dangerous scouting mission because we're more valuable. And in humility, he would place us in that position where we're going to stay back and guard the camp while he goes out and takes the risk. And that's this idea, each esteem other better than themselves, even though um, even though he could think, well, I'm the most, I've got the best voice acting talent here. I'm I'm the better podcaster. I'm the better YouTuber. I, I'm the one that we need to protect and save. I'm going to send you guys out there because you're expendable. The opposite of that is the right choice. And so Right. You're not considering skill or capacity. You're you're looking at value and recognizing God has value those people. I'm going to intentionally um, reduce my status and my pers my self perspective of my status, venerate those other people, and put himself in a in a lower status position. Now this isn't to say that he's actually a lower status person. No, but it's that he's taking on that mantle in in as we see in loneliness of mind internally with those internal thoughts in his heart and then also we'll, we would see that in my example at least externally where he's uh placing others first and giving that benefit to others yeah i, I have an illustration for this and it's actually not my illustration um it's jesus's it'll probably uh, be a good one he then talked to <laughs> right? Better than anything I could come up with. But he talked about um, going to a wedding and, and sitting at the table in wedding at a wedding. And, and he, the illustration that he used was that a man goes to a wedding and he sits at the, the table that is reserved for the most important people mm -hmm. there at the wedding. And he goes and he sits there and the steward of the wedding has to come to him after he sat there embarrassing him and say i'm sorry but someone that is of more importance than you needs to sit there i need you to go and sit at the foot of the table yeah jesus says it would be better for you even if you were the most important person there status like right. social status wise if you were the mo most important person there to go and sit at the least important table and have them come to you and say, I'm sorry, you, you can't sit here. You need to sit at the place of honor. Yeah. It would be better for you. And it's, it's about the view of self is I see myself, as you said, I, as a lower status and I'm, I'm, I'm going to put myself and because my flesh has a desire to make myself the high status person mm -hmm. and, and that's not walking in the spirit. That would yeah. be following the what would it what your terminology that would be following the contingent behavior instead of the rule governed behavior of God's word. Is that sure? Correct? I like that. That that makes all my 
my science terminology light bulbs go off in my head. Yeah, no, I like that. And in Pastor, and I think you can see it, it it's one of those things that you can see people do things, but you, we can't know everyone's heart. So you've got to you got to handle it yourself. I mean, um right. You know, you right. could you could see the evangelist comes and visits the church and you know, is he going to he's going to take a minute and like vacuum the floor because he sees the vacuum and the floor is dirty. Is he doing that so people can see how humble and willing to serve he is? Or is he doing that because he's like, Oh man, the floor is dirty and the vacuum's there. I'm going to vacuum it because, you right. know, even though I'm the person who's here in the exalted position of the speaker of the revival meeting conference, you know, what's the, uh, we, we don't know what's in his heart. Right. So, for us to right. look out and judge in is, is a danger, but um, it's it's I say that not to judge people, but so that we can be careful with ourselves, because we could be the 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 person vacuuming to be seen of men and to be looking for that um, right that recognition for being humble when in fact right come in as the evangelist to vacuum. Is anybody noticing that I'm vacuuming? <laughs> right. Right, and maybe maybe you've got enough social skills not to quite do it so overtly, but but in your heart, right. Right, is that what you're doing? And we got to watch out for that in our lives. So, so to summarize the um, expository segment of the show today, um, look, we know human existence isn't fair. We know that people are not actually equal because some people do have advantages that others don't have. Um, some people might have more skill, capacity, assets. I mean, I had a two-parent family that grew up as part of the church and was, you know, involved in, in uh, so I was able to learn all these things that I, I have, you know, for even good Christian friends that just didn't have those advantages. You know, it, we have an, a difference in life experience, and some people have things that are easier than others. And, and we, we can call that privilege. That's okay. But in spite of this, in spite of the fact that privilege does exist, it's a better way to place others in position of higher value than ourselves. Whether we are a person with more advantages or a person with less advantages, the best way is to place in both our minds, in the internal behavior, and in our actions that others can see in that external behavior. It is better to put other people in a position of higher value than ourselves in the same way that a commander would select troops. Okay, that, that's, the, that's the, the way the Bible frames it. So uh, this needs to be done even though we can see our own accomplishments, even though we know that we have high social value and status. When you're there on top of that hierarchy hill, you know it, you feel it. When you're the loser at the bottom, you know it, you feel it. But even in spite of though those things that we know and feel and are very real and very very much objectively the world that you're in the truth is we have no real value that's not real value our only true value comes from god and the value that he gives us and that that yeah. social hierarchy you're in is going to evaporate in almost no time all right it's it's uh all vanity as ecclesiastes says so uh Instead of placing yourself and your actions inside that hierarchy of value that you have in your social context, the real value comes from God. Considering that, the best thing to do is to lower yourself in your status, esteem others better, both internally and externally, and through that you find a right living of God's way. And then, of course, Philippians continues that idea with showing Christ's example. Pastor Aaron, have we expositorized the expository portion of the show well enough for you? <laughs> expositorized. That, I like that. That's probably a yes, word. Yes. I never had preacher class, and, so I don't know. You know, I, I, well, and, and I mean, what is uh, expository preaching but taking it word by word, phrase by phrase, and breaking it down so that we Defining can Defining it, it and putting it back yep, together? Yep. I love it. It's, it's very much in line with Christian behavior analysis. <laughs> All right, well then, so now that we know what God's word and way says, and we know what we're supposed to be doing, let's apply it to Pride Month and what's going on in, in our world today. Because um, 
Okay. It's all nice and academic to like look at what this ideal would be. But also, at the end of the podcast, our listeners and us are going to have to go out into a real world where everything is not that wonderful way that God's given us. And everything's basically terrible. And all of the environment is set around making you not do the thing that God would have us to do. So um, I just want to start with this. Uh, personal value is not found in your identity. Your, your value is not related to your identity, uh, whether that's yeah. your sexual identity. Uh, you know, you're not a more valuable person because you have morally upright and appropriate sexual relations. You're not value isn't through the insane misconstructions of of thinking that come from the pride group, pride supporters. Uh, your, your value is not in your sexual expression that is non-standard or non-normative. Maybe that that's that'll save me from that's getting still canceled. That's term now, I think. Uh, non-normative. I, no, I'm speaking like uh, psychologically normative, like your standard deviation bell curve, where like, you know, right. some are. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, um, it, being outside the normative curve of sexual behavior. It, that's not something that that is providing your value. Your value does not come from that identity, and it, it can't and it shouldn't. And if you're getting your value from your identity, you're, you're sacrificing the part of you that's an individual, and you're giving up your responsibility and your opportunity to choose for yourself and to choose whether you're going to follow God in God's way or, or any other thing that pulls it away. You're, yeah. you, you lose part of yourself to do that, and it's not a good thing. Just thinking about it uh, from my perspective that sometimes as a pastor and as Christians, we think, like, why, why do some of the people out there in the world do some of the crazy and strange things that they do? And, and you hit it on the head. It's because they're trying to find value and trying to find meaning and purpose in their life. And, and they haven't been able to find that in their life. And they're searching to, to try and prove and show that they are valuable. And, and, and so that's why they seek to take pride in their identity. And many people do this. And this is yeah. a, a really, to me, I think this really hits the core issue. Well, in, in realistically, too, um, the people who follow along this ideology and, and this pride way of thinking, they they are actually trying like you said they are trying to fill that that void of that need of purpose and this is what they found to fill that that need it's ultimately not satisfying which i'll, I'll go into when we talk about anger and resentment a little bit later but uh, it it is there in in part at least to provide purpose for someone's life because if you live in a world where you know everyone dies, everything decays and falls apart, and it's hard to find any meaning in anything because nothing will yeah. last. So what can you do that that matters? Uh, well, you can't have meaning as an individual in a world where everything that you are as an individual is destroyed in, you know, I don't know, 70 to 80 years. So if you can latch on to a group, if you can be part of an identity, let's say is uh, you, you, you join the gay men as an identity, well, we're probably going to have gay men until the return of Christ. That, that group is going to exist. So if you, uh, you remove yourself from the, the personal identity that you have as an individual who has a responsibility to choose and follow after God's way or reject it and fall into sin, then you're no longer gone when you die because your identity is okay. who you are that and and that group is not going to go away there will always yeah. be people in that group and so by creating the lgbt etc there's several letters now and depending on how woke you are you have more or less um, but the original We'll just stick with LGBT for this podcast with apologies to anyone offended by not including extra letters. Um, uh, if you can become part of that LGBT group and, and, and release your individuality into that 
group identity. The group lasts beyond you. And so therefore you can have purpose in that group. So it, it meets the God-shaped hole in your heart, at least partially, at least enough to have someone pursue it. And, yeah. and if you consider that then, Pastor Aaron, you can understand why such vitriol is, is sent towards the Christians who reject that group and reject that thinking. Because we're not just saying, hey, you shouldn't engage in this sexually sinful behavior or the sinful sexual behavior, which is how we often feel like we're just saying, well, we'll just stop doing these sins. We love you as a person, but just stop sinning. That's how we feel we're presenting it. But from speaking perspective taking, from the perspective of those involved in Pride and Pride Month, we're not just telling them to stop sinning. We're saying this purpose, this being that you've crafted yourself into that provides meaning for you and that allows you to exist in a meaningful way beyond the death of yourself and everything that you've done. That's bad. That's wrong. And we want to destroy it. So, so wow. it's really their whole hope. It, it is their hope. As we have hope in Christ, they have hope in being part of this identity group. Sure. And so, yeah. That value, their value for themselves is found in that. And we can't we can't overcome pride and overcome pride month until we can provide a better way to find that value, which we can because yeah. the Bible is yeah. basically that. <laughs> the whole thing is just here's where you can how how to live, how to be in a way that provides value and meaning. They don't have that. They've rejected that. Or they've not been shown that and they've been shown this other way. Right. They're resisting they're resisting it and leaning into pride and leaning into sin because without that they have no hope for meaning. Yeah. So uh, we recognize personal value comes from the God who loves us. Their personal value comes from being part of this community that's greater than them that they know will last. I hope that's I hope that is enlightening to, yeah. to people out there. That, who honestly, that really, really makes it make a lot of sense as to why, as you said, what was the word you used? The vitriol, the, the why there is so yeah. much hatred towards the this view, the towards Christians on this is because it, you're to them it's not just about a behavior; it's about an entire meaning and purpose and value in their life. Exactly. And that's why it can never stop. That's why it didn't stop when the the leftist won the Supreme Court case in America and then gay marriage became a legal thing. Uh, it, I, I remember as a kid, I don't remember if I said this on the show, but, but I talked to my friends in high school. I was like, yeah, this isn't going to stop. There's too much political power in place. The next thing that they're going to go for is trans stuff. They're going to go after so, and so, kids are like, there's no way they're never going to do that. That's way over the top. I was like, no, that's what's coming next. And that's where we're at now because you can't ever stop. You have to keep strengthening and expanding that identity. Right. right? And right. and we're seeing that now the, the trans thing broadly in our culture, they're pushing it so hard. Uh, I mean, even Fox news had that bit this la this month where they were praising this family that engaged in, um, having their their before their child could speak, they started having her present as male, even though she's not. And so, um, even though even the the Fox News guys, who are ostensibly the conservative minded people in the, in the news, they're on that side. So when when either we stop the, the we stop this and can p pendulum back the other way, but if we don't, we lose the trans issue. And then their group is strengthened, their purpose is strengthened, and then they've got to go on to the next thing. So right. so it was trans. Now it's transing the kids. Uh, I personally, I mean, this is a little political, but I, I think the next step is going into pedophilia and, and that being okay. And they've already started that with minor attracted persons. We've already seen that starting. And, and so I guess to me then, like... We need, us as Christians, need to focus on being humble and, and not on pride. But I think as we look at the some of the things going on in our world, I don't know, I, I guess to me, 
it helps me to see then that what we're looking at is people that are lost and, and searching for some sort of meaning and purpose and value in this life and, and they found something that, that they think that seems to, to give them that, but it, in reality it doesn't. And so me, you know, my thinking is then me as, as a Christian needs to see people with compassion and to, to show people, as you said, that there is a better way. Absolutely. And that God's way is, is better and it's going to be the, the, the best. Yeah, so and, and so we have to model that. We have to show we have to show in our lives that not just to teach it, right? To say it and, and present the, the right. words that show right. the rules from God's word. But but we also have to model it and show that it's a better life to follow God's way. And and of course the news people are gonna lambaste us no matter what. But you know, your gay friend at work your your uh, friends who are thinking about maybe my kid's trans because he picked out a dress he thought he wanted to wear. You know, you, you, those people are going to see your life and the model that you have. And that shows the path. That shows there's another way. Um, and I, I think that's a big problem right now, now Aaron, actually, with, with all this Pride, Month stuff, this Pride Month stuff and the Pride Month mindset. I mean, we're looking at crazy numbers right now it's about 20 percent, i believe is the number of the gen z kids are claiming some form of lgbt identity um it and it makes sense i mean it gives them the easy access to value they got a lot of positive attention in, in their school settings and in our, our culture um, they get power over others because they can now label someone as being hateful and then you know they you, you better be nice to me or i'll i'll go after you and all the powers on their side. I mean, Pastor Ernst, it's so bad that that some there there's this label maybe you've heard of it, uh, demisexual. This essentially means that someone's only attracted to someone who they're in love with, which means like they basically have a normative sexual expression. <laughs> but you call it something, and then you can be part of LGBT. So then you have power from that. And you have wow. access to value. You have access to positive attention. Your identity can become yeah. part of that undying, unending group. And you can lose your you lose yourself, as we've just talked about. So I don't want to re reiterate that right. part. But and you know, and you know, we, we're focusing on on this aspect of it. But really, in our culture, it's it goes beyond just that. It, it, I mean, the the issues in our culture today of of racism and and um you know feminism and and all of these things it's all about identity mm -hmm. it's all about the that intersectionality and finding that that identity and which of you identifies with more groups and it it gives you more in a sense more value right is is kind of the idea and, and, and if you so, can identify with the right groups the groups that are considered most right. valuable in their hierarchy uh then you're getting that um, I can last beyond myself and also the benefits I get right now in this culture where we can struggle for power. So it's sort of like the exact opposite. I mean, it's not sort of, it is actually the exact opposite of the Philippians two model that Christ gave us like exactly. Um, and it works for them to the extent that it may feel like they have some meaning there but it really is damaging it's hurtful to engage in pride as a yeah, sin and also the is. philosophy of the pride month followers the 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 part, part of the reason why this is so is that it's not true Okay, we have, like I said earlier in the show, we have the advantage of Christians as being, act we're actually right. Our, our understanding of the world reflects the actual world. Our understanding of God reflects what's actually going on. So when we act in accordance to that thing that's true, everything works out better. Now, it's hard because we have to resist the flesh and the temptations to please ourselves and follow after the things that seem seem right unto us. 
But when we stop that and when we do follow God's way, it works out and it's better for us. Right. In in the Pride Month model, when they follow that with fidelity, it does not actually reflect the truth of the real world. So what ends up happening is that the philosophy they're following comes into conflict with the real world and it contradicts it. But but human beings don't just give up our beliefs and the the rules and I, I, you know the word based behavior and the the beliefs that we follow we don't give that up when it's proven wrong there's so much research that proves that so if you believe a thing to be true even when you encounter actual in your own personal experience direct evidence that contradicts it we actually don't trust that it takes a long time and several iterations of that for us to come even close well what happens with the pride month philosophy it encounters the real world um, and then it doesn't work. And what happens, and we've talked about emotional reflexes before, when your behavior is supposed to produce a result that it doesn't produce, that reflexively triggers anger. Okay? When you put the dollar in the pop machine, that pop can better come out because you did the right thing to get pop. <laughs> and when pop. And when it doesn't, we get, we get angry. angry, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, you can handle that anger appropriately or not, and that was a different episode, but the anger is going to be triggered as a reflex. When you engage in the behavior that's advocated for by the Pride Month philosophy, and it doesn't produce the love and the good feelings and all the wonderful things it's supposed to produce, the result is anger and resentment. And their philosophy says not that your anger and resentment is based on a false understanding of reality. But it says your anger and resentment is what happens when those other people who don't believe this Pride Month philosophy are able to exist and continue not being part of the Pride Month philosophy. So the anger and resentment builds towards people like Christians and people who just want to be normal human right. beings and not get involved in all this crazy modern identity right. theory. You can't admit that the anger and resentment, resentment that you have is, is generated by your own philosophy. Well, well worse than that, that would... I don't think they can even recognize it. You don't recognize right. it. So you, so you find... Uh, another source for your resentment and anger and that's those that disagree correct so that's, that's why on twitter especially you'll see uh, people aren't making rational arguments they're not out there saying well re in reality identity is this and that and so it should be done this way no they're just screaming uh, they're, they're not making rational arguments their anger and resentment occurs because their philosophy doesn't work in the real world and so they're they're expected reinforcement doesn't occur and since it doesn't they have to attack and they're not doing it with logic and reason they're doing it with passion and and anger and here's the thing pastor aaron someone who's angry is easy to control a group of people who are angry are really easy to control because all you have to do is make a believable claim that you can solve the problem you identify the problem and you solve it, right? Classically, Hitler did this, right? After World right. War, after right. World War One, the whole economy of the world was just in shambles. Uh, there was all these restrictions put on Germany. Their economy was toast. Hitler came out and he's like, "All right, folks. Yeah, those Jews. This is their fault. Follow me. I've got a plan." And and the German people just were like, "Yeah." Hitler didn't rise to power as a small minority that just suppressed all these people. Like, he had support from the Germans because they were angry, they were resentful, and they had a really strong need. And he came in and said, I can, I can meet the need. Those are the bad people. Follow me. That is, psychologically speaking, what the Pride Month followers have opened themselves up to. And then, I know we're not a politics show, but you can see in the politics, if you look at it, that the the political control of the followers of this philosophy is it, it's everywhere. And so I think it's fair to say, Pastor Aaron, that Pride Month and following a Pride Month philosophy 
makes us into slaves. We become slaves of our passion. Mm. We become slaves under control of our anger and resentment because that anger and resentment leads us to um, follow our own desires and try to resolve the anger. And so we see the political control for it or the political control over the people and the political support for the philosophy that allows the political control over the people. It makes us slaves. Like, like, like mentally you are enslaved by your anger and resentment and you're living in a philosophy that does nothing but intentionally breed more and more anger and resentment. Right. The only path to freedom is humility. The only path to freedom is God's way. Place each esteem others better than themselves. So if we can follow that and and we have, w- w- when we reject pride and we embrace an humility, we, we can s- have this clarity that otherwise we wouldn't have. And we can now choose with clarity the right way to go and act in the best interests of ourselves and those we love and, and ultimately to the glory of God. Pride is slavery. Humility is freedom and peace. I think we should choose humility. That's that's it. That's what I got for us today. So then, uh, I guess, Pastor Aaron, thank, thanks for joining me for the show today. Uh, before we go, of course, we'd love to have Pastor Aaron's final challenge. What challenge do you have for us this month? So as we're, especially as we're focusing on pride here, I think to me, I, 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 I like to challenge in questions. If we examine ourselves and ask ourselves this question, um, am I living a life full of pride that's focused on me? Is, is my focus on myself? Am I putting myself above others? Or am I esteeming others better than myself? Really examine your, your life and, and, and see, question, am I really putting others first or is it all about me? Thank you, Pastor Aaron, for the final challenge. Really appreciate that. And we thank you, our viewers and supporters out there. Please go ahead right now and click like on the video on YouTube. Um, And then if you're on Facebook, go ahead and share it. Uh, You know what? Copy the link and go share it on Facebook. Apparently that uh, is really helpful right now for the algorithms. Uh, But I I just want to say thank you to our supporters. Thank you who are watching. Uh, Leave us a comment as well if you'd like. Um, Thank you to Pastor Aaron for being here with us today and for editing. Thank you uh, to uh, Calvary Baptist Church and Huron, South Dakota for sponsoring the show. Head on out there, folks, and live God in God's way.